The Federation has been engaged in bloody slaughter with the Dominion for three months. Garrick bruised his head on a bulkhead. And if Jake Sisko wants his articles sent to the Federation, he's going to have to provide a more balanced perspective. Hey, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton. Hello, hello. We have a very special guest today. We're just going to cut to the chase. Noah AK is joining us. Yeah. Back. My triumphant return. You know him as Rin on Star Trek Discovery or that guy on Twitch. So everybody do <laughs> yourself you a favor and follow him on Twitter and he will send you all the links you need to know to go. see him live. Uh, my name is Ryan T. Husk. It is a Nog episode. We are joined by Melissa Longo as well. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> just wave to the yourself. Back. <laughs> or are you giving us the back the backhand queen wave? We yeah, we need to we need to stay in line. We need to stay in line. That's We're getting an the insult backhand. in <laughs> uh, Today we're doing a review of Deep Space Nine season six. Huzzah! Season six, episode one, a time to stand, written by Ira Stephen Bear and Hans Beimler, directed by Alan Craker. Uh, this was September 29th. 1997. Wow. How's everybody doing? In 1997, I was probably doing a lot better, to be honest with you. That was a good year. <laughs> yeah. That was a exactly. good year. <laughs> yeah. Why so? How so? You know, I feel like from, you know, the year of my birth until now, it's just been downhill. So just law oh. of averages. I'm probably so pretty better at that point. <laughs> so the earlier we go back the better you're doing that's my that's my thought man that's my thought well lucky for you i think this is the low point and i don't mean that as an insult to us i mean after this it's going to go up oh. all right oh. all right okay yeah you you guys are going to send me back back to 1997 Hurling i'm going to go buy cds and download stuff <laughs> off napster it's happening you know, I was just literally thinking today, should I just throw away my CDs? Like, yeah, you should. Yeah, I was thinking that yesterday because I went through some DVDs and I thought those two. I was like, yeah, the DVDs, the CDs, all of that stuff. And I'm thinking, like, at what point am I going to just go ahead and let, like, they're not going to be worth money. They're not like collectibles. <laughs> yeah. Am I really going to watch season five of Family Guy? <laughs> So. Not on Netflix. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, mm. All right. Well, let's talk about this episode because otherwise we're going to go down the rabbit hole of CDs and I've had them for years and they're collecting dust and I've had to never use them. And I'm sure Ciroc are the same way. Uh, this yeah. was dedicated at the very beginning of the episode in memory to, in memory of Brandon Tartikoff. I don't know if any of you know who he was. He was a TV executive for NBC it seems mm -hmm. I don't know much about him. Um, I was hoping, Strzok, if you know, great. If not, then we salute him. Yeah, I do know who he is. Um, and while I was doing some research about the origins of Star Trek and how Star Trek um, kind of got manifested it at all, you know, uh, the connection, for example, with Lucille Ball and mm -hmm. Desi Lu Productions and so there was so much there. And in regards to Deep Space Nine, Brandon Tartikoff is the essentially the creator of Deep Space Nine. Wow. It was it was his idea to do another Star Trek show after the next generation. Um, and so he collaborated with Michael Piller at the onset of this show and actually came up with the idea of Deep Space Nine with Michael Piller. Um, and as a matter of fact, so just an, uh, an idea of the kind of shows that are credited to uh, Brandon Tartikoff. Um, he's credited with Hill Street Blues, LA Law, Law and Order, Family Ties, The Cosby Show, Cheers, Seinfeld, The Golden Girls. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> but nice. Miami Vice, Knight Rider, The A Team. Oh my God. Saved gosh. by the Bell, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, 
Saint Elsewhere. So uh, yeah, those are those are some of the shows that he's. Uh, At this point, you're just reading the TV Guide channel. Yeah, from yeah. The, <laughs> and the, and the Throw MacGyver in there, and we're all set. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah. yeah, some minor shows here and there. You know. Wow! 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 <laughs> yeah, and so then as a side note, it says, and he was also involved in the creation of Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. So it's like the it's like the NAFTA for the yeah. rest Aww. of his, uh, <laughs> At least on Wikipedia, but. Um, so yeah, no, Brandon Tartikoff is, um, is really the reason why Deep Space Nine exists along mm-hmm. with Michael Piller. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously if somebody with that resume decides that he wants to do something, it pretty much gets done. So, um, <laughs> you know, shout out to Mr. Brandon Tartikoff cause I'm pretty sure he was around for the conception of this obviously didn't die until the sixth season or thereabouts in between the fifth and sixth season. Mm -hmm. So he was able to watch the show, not only blossom, but I'm sure he was keeping tabs. Blossom too. Uh, No. (laughs) That's even better. Wow. That is good stuff. Henry. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So he, he was around to watch, watch the show develop and, um, uh, you know, that's why he was credited with the title card in the beginning of this episode, kind of just, I mean, it wouldn't have been here without him. So, um, thanks Ooh. to him that I, I had a job for all these years. And <laughs> so I have to thank him as well, uh, as lo- as well as Michael Piller. So thank all of you guys for, um, coming up with a great idea to, really um, break boundaries and not do what, you know, what everybody else is doing and take chances um, as far as investing in a black Star Trek show. Mm. So, um, you know, hats off to them for really going out on a limb and and making history there. So um, thank you, Brandon. Cool. Mm -hmm. Um, That sounds like also a really good question for the free for all. We'll, Mm. we'll list off, all of those titles uh, that Brandon was a part of and uh, ask everybody what their favorite one out of all those. Let's see how many mm. Knight Riders we get. Well, uh, no, okay. No, we got we to gotta talk about the episode. I was already going to start talking about Golden Girls. And <laughs> <Knight> <laughs> At least we're not talking about basketball this time, guys. Um, okay. So yeah. Noah, I don't know. I know you're doing a rewatch right now, right? You're like in the second or third season, right? Well, so so actually the the horrible thing is Mary and I just started the fifth season. Oh, so no. we 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 uh, just watched the ship. Um and then we got side what happened? We would have been right on track, but we got sidetracked and watched three seasons of Ink Wars, uh which is <laughs> a tattooing reality show that's just uh, just so it's just trash. It's just the best trash. Uh, but then, but then I was like, oh no! But so I literally know. I literally like. I I just skipped to the first episode of season six for this. Uh, but I I missed the the back half of season five, or we haven't gotten there yet. So I've I've got a lot under my belt, but basically missing a lot of the key elements of the this the foundation for this episode. But you can kind of get it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Major but man, at the beginning. that's some good stuff. You'll definitely have to go back. Yeah. Your wife is going to yes. be pissed at us. <laughs> she won't know. I haven't told her yet. <laughs> okay. I'm going to watch it for the first time and be like, oh, yeah, wow. Wow, this Look is those exciting. Things. Aren't these cool? <laughs> that happened? That's no crazy. No way. I expected that. Yeah, yeah. You could just start making predictions. Be like, that, yeah, that's I don't I know. I feel too, like yeah. Jake's going to stick around. And, and it's, I just, that's just a feeling I get. It's the writer in me. Yes, exactly. I, I'll do that. Yeah. I bet Worf's upset about something. <laughs> well, what he's a powder. <laughs> he's uh, always upset about something. This, this episode had so much comedy in it that's always lost. Like people think of Deep Space Nine as this dark show. And the Dominion Wars are, are super dark and heavy, but there's just so much comedy in it. Like, and I love the comedy, like, uh, and it's like straight person comedy. Like when Wei Yun is saying the shops are re- everything Wei Yun says, basically, let's just start there. But then he's like, the shops are reopening. The promenade is a buzz with activity. Once again, 
The habitat ring echoes with laughter of happy children and DeMargo's I've doubled security at patrols throughout the station <laughs> because they hate the Bajorans. And it's, I just, I couldn't get enough of that dark humor <laughs> of their, their hatred for each other. And their, the, the annoyance with the Bajorans, I don't know. Did, or did you guys like any of that comedy or am I on my own there? Guess I'm yeah. on my own. Yeah, you're on your own. I, I think. Was, <laughs> I was I was too busy being pissed off at them <laughs> to to be laughing. I'm like, ah, Cardassians, you're such assholes. I yeah, thought of you when really goes full asshole in this. Yes, one. yes, yes. Such yes. a slime ball. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. The sexual uh, those are sexual harassment claims. So oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is, but I feel like every time I do a Star Trek episode recap, there's always a sexual harassment claim in every one. Like, <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Why is it? Why is it? Yeah, uh, somebody's, it, somebody's getting it, impregnated or mind. It, you know, <laughs> someone's invading their yeah. mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we have to update our guidelines. They, I, th I think DS9 has the old guidelines. They, we really have to update it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's uh, Ducat's definitely creepy. And uh, and going back to what you were saying, Ryan, about the humor, there was a lot of moments where I thought uh, that they were playing more toward the humor or at least trying to find some kind of humor. I think there was one moment where uh, Nog was talking about the chairs Inside yes. of the yes. Madarsh. Oh, very yes. Good. And sandwiches. That was very good. Yeah. Right. So yeah. there was a lot of that kind of let's make light of dark, you know, of the dark situation that we're in. And um, even the way Cisco was having to explain to his dad that he left Jake behind. He's like, Dad, it's not what you think it is. And he's like, well, <laughs> you, mean, you mean you didn't leave him with a bloodthirsty uh, you know, <laughs> killer group of people? He's like, no, well, actually, I kind of did. So I, there were moments like that that were, I thought, were telling a very serious story in a lighter kind of way that um, made it a little bit more easy to digest. Mm. Um, so yeah, I did see some of the humor in there. And and uh, you know, Jed Zia had this amazing leap into yes. Worf's arms, uh, only to fight about whatever animal they were going to slaughter, or whatever. That 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 definitely yeah. gave me wedding planning flashbacks. Uh, that was good as well. <laughs> you know, I actually <laughs> noticed that Worf didn't even budge when she launched herself. In his I know. Arms. I was like, man, that is a sturdy man. <laughs> he didn't even like like whoa. We you know, were just... watching an episode a little while ago where. It's them and the Jemadar, and they're working together to, you know, take down a rogue group of Jemadar. And at one point, somebody goes down, and Michael Dorr just has like an unconscious dude like over his shoulder, and he's like <laughs> a football player, just like douche, douche, and he's like not even budging. Is there's a limp human on him? And it's, Mary was like, "I need to watch that again and make sure that's not a dummy because like he looks like he's literally carrying nothing. The dude is just like totally a tank, strong man." What uh, a good actor. A, a little bit more on Joseph Sisko, by the way, because he's been so precious to us for only, he's only been in a few episodes, but he's just so great and, you know, such a legendary actor and, and such great moments. But there was a funny moment there on top of what you were saying as well, Ciroc, that at least that made me laugh was when uh, uh, Sisko, Captain Sisko said something to the effect of, well, you you didn't raise me to lie or something like that. And then Joseph says, well, I raised you to be a chef for all the good that did. Or something yeah. Like, yeah. That's so like, great. I'm like, we we get you, Joseph Sisko. We we know who you are. We we totally get that. You know, we've all had like yeah. that grandma or grandpa or older person in our life that was a little sassy and really smart and really funny. And he just, I think he reminds me of my grandma. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> In a manly, in a manly way. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, there's definitely something there when you're getting called out on all stuff. I mean, that's the, that's the beauty of his characters because it, it allows us to see Cisco in a different light. 
because he's always having to walk around with this, you know, I'm in charge kind of thing. And there's a moment, there's the very few moments where you, he gets to kind of be more himself when he's with Jake or when he's with his dad, which is even different because, you know, when you're with your kid then you still have that parent thing and you have a little bit of a, you know, have to have some control. But when you're the child, then, you know, the parent can talk to you how they want to talk to you and you mm. just have to deal with it. So uh, you get to see that in the Joseph uh, Benjamin Cisco relationship. Well, and I think that carries over the the slice of real life that the last episode had. Um, but this time showing that slice of real life during wartime. So, and on all of these moments of levity are to help um, kind of ease the dire situation that they're in, uh, mm. or, that they're facing. So I think it's brilliant that they sprinkle those things in, that Worf is obsessing over his wedding mm -hmm. and how it's not right, rather than, you know, the, the Jem Hadar on their tail or they losing more Love. than, you know, it's great. Loved it. And there was that funny line where she, where Dax acquiesces and says like, okay, fine. We can do the Targ slaughter after the dinner or the, or the dinner after. And he, he doesn't flinch. He just goes, as it should, as yeah. it should be. I think. Mm -hmm. is and I watched that like three times because he's just so like, that's right. Okay. You know, not, not finally you. getting the wedding I wanted. Yeah. 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 Well, and then, and then um, Cisco is like, well, trust me, a small wedding is the way to go. And, and Dax is like, you'll get, you get married the way I want. And then I'll get married. And she's pointing to Worf <laughs> as she says, the way I want. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Which is such a, a nice little subtle way of saying, yeah. And, and then they're like, all right, we're off to go bang. And Cisco's yeah. like, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> don't break any bones <laughs> Whoa, okay. yeah that yeah. was powerfully implied there <laughs> I, I actually like even just the intro into that where martok is like yeah you got to talk to the, like he's been he's been <laughs> bitching about this for this whole time and i can only see i can just imagine that you know where the two klingons are like you know should we do this should we do that and, and morph is like my wife has scheduled me. <laughs> <laughs> Just bitching about that. They're like looking at him like, dude, seriously? Um, so I like the way Martok kind of said, you you got to talk, you know, like get it out now because I can't hear this anymore. I can't hear this. <laughs> he says like, he's been unable to think about anything other than the wedding. <laughs> yeah. Like, please go hammer it out, you guys, if you know what I'm saying. There was uh, yeah. another thing. You guys were mentioning the chairs. There was another little throwaway line that was really smart in, in, when Garrick shows up. You know, it was like after they said, you know, well, right now, you know, what's his name? Bashir just says, you, you'll be begging for, you know, an infirmary later on. And, and she, Dak says, well, I'd be happy with just a view screen. And then Nog says, or a chair. And O'Brien says, or a sandwich. But then in the, the next sequence, Garrick comes in and everybody's happy to see Garrick and Julian pats yeah. him on the shoulder and then O'Brien says, pull up a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what yes, am I watching? I, a sitcom I was like, oh, I'm a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> nice button at the end there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's when the laugh track goes and they do the freeze frame. Yeah. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. The laugh tracks of the old, uh, but yeah. A um, little bit of humor. They always kind of, um, that, that's the thing about these drama, right? That's like you 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 you're playing on the opposite spectrum of whatever the tensions are, and that creates it. And then comedy is so so much the same. It's just just a little bit of a, a flip on it, right? And and so that's why you you're able to um, blend some of the two. And you find really good comedic actors are also great at drama and, and vice versa, because mm -hmm. there is a, a similarity in, in the approach. Yeah. Jamie Foxx was one of the first to really blow me away where, where they're like, hey, don't don't pigeonhole me. Don't don't try to put a stamp on me. I mean, he was amazing in Ray. 
Yeah. And he's not the only one. It's just, mm-hmm. I mean, once you understand, I mean, once you understand one, you can probably, you know, do the other. It's just which one you're better at. Um, you know, and, and some people are better at the, the more comedic approach. But no, I love the way the writers handle the, the dialogue, the way they handle the tension. And I felt like uh, watching this episode that I was getting, it felt like they split the show into two. Mm. Right? Because it, it was like, it's like you're wa- you watch Cheers all the time. So everything happens at the bar. You're always watching Cheers. It's always at the bar. Now, if Sam Malone, you know, has a hot dog cart outside, and <laughs> half the show is about the hot dog cart and half the show is about the bar, you're, you kind of split the show a little bit, right? He's, he, he took like three or four people with him outside to the hot dog cart, and then the other guys are inside the bar. So it's almost like that. I feel like they've taken a show that was already complete and messed it up, how you mess up a Rubik's Cube that you, you buy brand new and you mess it up. I feel like they're taking a show, they've made it, they've set the boundaries, we've set the promenade, we know what it is, and now we're going to take everybody out of there, move a couple of people around, now throw, you know, mix things up, and I feel like I have a whole new show with two shows. Yeah. Like, I have, I have what's happening yeah. on DS9 and what's happening outside of DS9. Yeah, they say, uh, what is it, a movie is an event and a TV show is a location, you know, like Cheers or like Jerry's apartment or like Deep Space Nine or like the Enterprise. Uh, so no, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still kind of stuck on the fact that you skipped 20 episodes. And so I'm, <laughs> I'm really interested in your perspective. Like if things were confusing or if you were just like, well, I have a pretty solid base of understanding and knowledge. So I wasn't too thrown. Although the only thing that I was really, I didn't have any recollection was, was Jake staying on the station. So when I don't really know the the context in which that happened, so I've that I find very interesting and fun mm-hmm. that Jake gets left behind, and then we of course have my favorite scene in the episode, which is the Jake Wayun walk and yes. talk. Uh-huh. You know, obviously I'm a big <laughs> Jeffrey Combs fan, so I'm sort of curious to hear what he was like on set and what it was like to work with him, because uh, that was one of my favorite scenes. And I, he kind of steals the the show as he often does in this episode. Yeah. Well, he's a, he's a joy and a pleasure. He's a he's a very professional actor. So he comes to work. He comes to uh, have fun while he's working, but he's really coming there to get the job done. And you can see the kind of fun he has in the performance. So he, he, the fun is on screen. It's not, you know, the throwing bagels at, throwing bagels at the uh, sound. <laughs> that sounds fun. Yeah, that sounds like something you did. <laughs> it's just something I did for fun. <laughs> um, but no, it was, it, it, he, he's so great um, because he, 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 he was playing on certain moments there. And I, I you know, I just, felt the, a level of comfort with him, but there were like moments when, you know, he, he would, he would like, Oh, Jake, Jake, like, like, no, no. And, you know, he, he plays with his power because he's very powerful in this episode and in the show, right. This character has a lot of power, but he is not, he doesn't wield the power in a threatening type of, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a dictator type of way, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like, Dukat. He seem, he, like Dukat. He seems a lot more, yeah. like I said, charming, uh, open to discussion. Like even with this, like he could very easily tell Jake, hey, Jake, you're going to write this story. This is the mm-hmm. story you're going to write. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's all. That's all. I'm not going to accept anything else. I think Jake said something like, "I'm not writing Dominion propaganda or something." Yes. Like that yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. And then he says, yeah. "Well, you just you keep writing. I'll keep reading. We'll, we'll keep, leave it at that for now." <laughs> like what the hell right. is that? <laughs> right. You got to impress me. Um, <laughs> but but at least he doesn't like give him a mandate and say. This is what you have to write. These are the subject matter you have. These are the questions you, you know, and forward it to my office and this, you know, and then I'll approve it. He's kind of giving him a room to play with. He's like, you got to get it first, but you're not going to write stuff that makes me look like a bad guy. 
Mm -hmm. I'm too smart for that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so he's not letting Jake get away with the word occupation or whatever it was that was <laughs> offensive. <laughs> yeah, he said that just sounds like such a bad word. Uh, yeah. We're going to take a quick break right now. But speaking of charming, we will talk about Ducat as well uh, a little bit more, right, guys? Yeah, right. right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll be right back on the seventh rule. <laughs> 